Hello everyone, it's your boy B3 and Pip the dog here, back with another kicking movie reaction review. Been doing lots of horror, been doing lots of monsters, today we got both. American Beast. Yeah, it's uh, PG-13, uh, it's from 2014, it's an hour and a half long, as most of the movies I've been reviewing are. It's got a 3.1 on IMDb and 3 out of 5 on Prime Video where it can be watched for no additional fee. The read-up is, James Erickson begins a journey to discover the truth behind a mysterious creature that haunts the woods in the small town of Solitude. Uh, it has two directors, actually, Livingston Odnan and Taylor Scott Olson. Uh, well, this is a reaction review, so I don't... Unless I already know a lot of the behind-the-scenes stuff, I usually don't look any up, just because the, my reviews are more like reactions. Um... And I'm assuming that one directed the scenes with our main character and the other directed the flashbacks. Uh, that's, that's my theory. Uh, I should probably look that up, and I probably will. Uh, starring Armin Habibovich, Victoria Lenchell, and Brett Latchaw. It's horror suspense, you know. Uh, supporting actors Alex Content, uh, Glenn Stone, Kelly Lasuvar. Amy Correll, Harry Alger, producers Livingston Ogden and Taylor Scott Olson. Uh, it's from ITN Films. It has drug use, foul language, sexuality, and violence. Yes. Um, and it's actually pretty cool. Um, I liked it. People seem to... There seems to be... Uh, Kind of a mixed opinion on this movie, I noticed. Um, but uh, it's kind of an homage to monster films in general. Because the main character is going through all these records that his mother left him upon her death about a piece of property that she owns that's been passed down in their family. And um, each generation, like people and family members and stuff, are killed on this property. Pretty much anyone who ventures onto this property is murdered by this monster and it's chronicling it and it's really cool because each flashback is done in the film style of the movies from that era right and that's actually really cool like there's one from the 30s and it's shot and even they they even act like the the acting in that scene is like way lower caliber than the acting in the rest of the movie but that's because it's intentional because they're trying to go for the 30s kind of cheap monster movie thing the way the monster even looks changes in each one. You, in all of them, you really just see a hand, but the hand looks different each time. Uh, and also there's at one point where it's implied that the creature is in fact evolving and changing and that those changes aren't just for the sake of the flashback, but also in canon, diegetic changes. Um, and it's really cool. There's like a, a slasher one where it's like a bunch of the kids and they're all slasher uh, movie like stereotypes and it's got like the creative slasher kills and stuff it's got like the stoner and the slut and the virgin and the nerd and the jock and that's all of them it's like okay you figured it out it's, um but yeah the story of the monster is that he was like an evil uh native american war chief and his people put him down because, like, they executed him because of his evil. And he had a lover from another tribe who sold her soul to resurrect him as this monster on their land, uh, on the land where he was put away. So he became a monster and she became an immortal. And they're linked together. Big spoilers here. The way to defeat the monster, like, you, you can't really harm the monster it's invulnerable but you can harm her and whatever you do to her it does to the monster pumpkin head style right um but the thing is only someone uh of that land can kill them and the the woman and the monster think that means only a native american from one of the local tribes can kill them that's not the case because the main character was conceived on that land uh, before his father was slaughtered and his mother escaped, right? 
So he's of the land, so he's able to kill them. It seems like he kills them a little too easily. Like, most of the movie is about the flashbacks. It's about the story and the mystery. And the him interacting with the monster is actually very, very quick. I felt like the movie could have maybe been 15 minutes longer just to have some chasing around and stuff. Uh, you know, I think that would have been a little fun. Just just 15 more minutes tacked onto the film. Uh, but, yeah. You know, I, it was still really enjoyable. Uh, it was a very fun ride. And then it does have kind of this twist at the end, right? Where, like, the mother originally left him the box to... Uh, the mother originally left him the box so he could kill the creature because she knew she found out he would be the only one able to do it but then she also realized that whoever kills the creature takes its place so he would turn into the next monster um, and she left that as a video message on the found footage one because one of the flashbacks is an homage to found footage right there's an homage to like the cheesy uh Monsters of the Past, and there's an homage to Slashers, there's an homage to Found Footage. It's This is an homage film. I did not expect an homage film when I started it, but it is absolutely an homage film. Uh, like Pacific Rim or Superman Returns. Uh, yeah, very interesting. I did not expect an homage film, but I'm glad I got it. Very cool, unique-looking creature. It's kind of like a treant almost. Uh, like from Dungeons and Dragons, you know, it's it's a very cool kind of tree creature. I really liked it. I would I would buy an action figure of it. There are a lot of these like I feel like every time I watch one of these movies, I'm like I'd buy an action figure of the creature because I buy horror action figures and I I just really would love NECA to take some of these and do them because they're so cool. Uh, but it wouldn't really be worth it for them because so few people have seen these exploitation films. Uh, but American Beast is a fun film. It's really just... F uh, it's really not for the general audience. It's really for, like all horror exploitation films, it's just for people who are already deep into horror. But this is basically a history lesson in horror. Um, so if you're a big horror buff, you will really appreciate this film. But if you're not, you you won't. And I think that's why the film has such mixed reviews is because of that. I haven't actually read any of their reviews. I'm just looking at the stars and titles on Prime Video. But that's it. Like, the suit's good. It's got some good practicals, but it's also got some good digitals, a nice mix of the two. You know, it's practical when it needs to be, but there's some digital stuff to enhance it, and that, and that looks really good. Um, it's a good film. The acting is okay the acting's okay right and then there's this old man in the film that like fills our protagonist in on some stuff and it's very very obviously a young person in makeup to appear old because he's in one of the flashbacks and he's in the flashback as his younger self which is his normal self and then they put him in old man makeup but we mostly see him in the old man makeup and I like when they cast the same actor, like they did it in Endgame, it's the same actor, but in like uh, old man makeup, I like when they do that, like they did it in Citizen Kane and other stuff, but sometimes it's better to just get an authentic old person, and I think this might have been a case where an authentic old person would have been warranted, other than the makeup, it's good makeup, but you can still really tell it's a young person under there. But uh, there is a scene where he's... I don't know, it's weird, because he's he can barely walk through most of the film, and then suddenly he's like he like runs into the woods and he doesn't need his walking stick anymore, and he can just shoot with very... He can just shoot with great accuracy. Uh, yeah, that was a little weird, but... <laughs> You know, that's that's stuff that just happens in movies. You've got to suspend that disbelief. But American Beast is going to be gr a great film for horror buffs to watch. Once again, if you have a Prime Video subscription on Amazon, uh, you can watch it for no additional cost. Uh, it comes with the subscription. PG-13, 2014, hour and a half. Fun film with fun practicals. Uh, and it's 
horror buffs will love it. So that's it. Thank you all very much for your support. Remember to rate, comment, and subscribe. Check out all the cool links in the description below. Facebook, Twitter, etc. I don't know what I'm doing next, but I know very soon we're going to do Lord of Tears and the Black Gloves. Because I've wanted to see those since they came out, and they were hard to find, and then they were on Prime Video, and then they left Prime Video, and... It's a long story, because uh, I only just got Prime Video. That's why I've been doing all these reviews for the past month, because I, like, just got Prime Video. Uh, but that's it. Thank you all once again for your support. Hit that notification bell so you never miss a video, and I'll see you all next time.